Hello, everyone. Welcome to the twentieth week in this school year. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez, and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I'm coming to you from Tuesday, January 16th, 2024, and it is way past the end of the day. I had my Minecraft club after school, and I had a full day with the students, and I've been here working on a couple of other things. This is the last week of the second grading period, if you can believe it or not. We're already halfway through the school year, pretty much, and there's just so many things to do when it's the week when grades are due. And it's also a very short week. Yesterday was Dr. King's day, so it was a holiday. We were back in school today. Tomorrow we have the students, Thursday we have the students. But Friday is a teacher planning day, which I will be coming and leaving early at 1 p.m. because I have a doctor's appointment. So let me give you a rundown of today. This morning we started by making sure students were finishing work that they have not completed yet. So I had students finishing their one word activity, which you can see some examples of from last week's vlog. And they were just making sure they finished their paragraph. I also had some work that they hadn't finished since before the break that we needed to make sure we addressed. And then we had the students go back to our unit three, week five selections. Food fight is our shared read and a new kind of coin is our anchor text and read through those so that they can then gather the benefits and problems with GM Foods. This is the handout that I created for them to go ahead and write the benefits and the problems for source one, which is food fight, and source two, which is a new kind of corn. And the reason I want them to do that is twofold. One, because I want them to see what are the evidence and reasons that the authors are using to support their claim. And the other is because we're actually using these two sources for our argumentative essay where students need to write whether GM foods are beneficial or not. So that's what I did with my block one this morning. Usually I start with my block two, my ELL group on Tuesdays, but my co-teacher needed her homeroom this morning. So that's why I started with my homeroom today. And then I had her homeroom, which is my block two, my ELL students. They also were working on completing their one word activity. They needed to write their paragraph. So for them, I gave them a little bit of a different paragraph frame just to keep it more simple for them. You may recall that this was the paragraph frame that I use with my advanced group. This is the paragraph frame that I am using with my ELL students and they pretty much finish writing their paragraph, making sure they address their word and what it meant to them. I did have the students using Google Translate on their phones or on the laptops so that they could understand and write their responses in English. And then we went ahead and also had them complete their snapshots from winter break, which you can see an example from last week's vlog. I noticed that a lot of them hadn't finished completely drawing their pictures and writing their sentences to describe their pictures. So I went ahead and had them finish that. And then we started introducing the activity that they're going to work on, continue to work on tomorrow. So you saw that with my block one, I had them write down the benefits and problems. I had them search for it themselves. But with my block two, my ELL students, I'm giving them papers that they're gonna cut out that all have either a problem or a benefit and they have to sort them out. So this is a paper that I started cutting out, but this is in reality what the students will get. So this paper has 20 different benefits or problems and they're gonna cut them out. And I gave them this manila sheet of paper that they then prepared in the following form. I had students fold the paper in half so they can draw a line down the middle. And on one side, they're gonna put benefits and on the other side, problems. And then they're gonna cut out those papers and they're gonna decide whether it is a benefit or if it's a problem. That way they're pretty much doing a similar activity for my block one, but it's gonna help them when it comes down to writing the argumentative essay on whether GM foods are beneficial. 
So that is the rundown of today. I also went ahead and just put on the student's desk these little stickers that are good for, they have little textures. They're like calm strips, if you ever heard of them. But I found these on Amazon and let me show you. So you may recall that all my desks are labeled after a Minecraft precious stone or mineral. But I got these and they're for breathing. So it says start here so they'll breathe in. And then when they get over here, they'll breathe out and they're textured. So it's a really nice feeling and it'll guide them through some breathing work. Here's one so you can kind of look at the words a little better. So start here and they'll breathe in. And then when they get over here, they'll breathe out. So I, I put one on each desk. So every student desk has one. If you're interested, I'll make sure I remember to leave a link to those in the description box below. Again, I got them from Amazon. I think there was a pack of 36. So I have some extras and also the middle parts that you have to punch out. They also are textured and they look like little teardrops. So I saved them for maybe using them in some other way. Also for my Minecraft club, we started planning out our Rube Goldberg machine and I created a planner so that they can start putting their ideas down on paper before we go into a creative world and have them start creating their Rube Goldberg contraptions. I just made a very simple project planner, had some directions. I want them to start thinking about first and foremost, what is the simple task that their machine will perform? What kind of Minecraft blocks they will use? And up to the first 10 steps of their machine because of course it's going to be a chain reaction and then on the back they can draw a diagram of what they hope to create so we got pretty much through this area but we're going to continue working on it next week so that's pretty much what i've been able to accomplish today tuesday i will see you tomorrow for wednesday welcome to the end of the day wednesday and uh, Today was basically a catch-up day, catch-up on pickles. The students were finishing assignments that they owe me for the end of the grading period. I started with my ELL group this morning, which is my block two, and they were working on getting their evidence for the future skills argumentative essay that we worked on starting in November. I know it's kind of late, but I noticed that they hadn't finished it. So I gave them the paper that I showed you yesterday that has all the skills for the future skills and the evidence that supports those skills. So they were working on that. They were finishing a couple of other different things, including a passage on Cesar Chavez that they needed to answer the questions. And yeah, also they were working on their one word activity. I just graded those. I have about seven more kids from that group that need to finish their one word activity. And I also graded their snapshots from winter break. I went ahead and also had them, actually, that's the first thing they did this morning. As soon as they came in, they continued working on their benefits and problems, sorting the evidence for GM foods, whether it's beneficial or not. So I got all the students to finish that this morning, it took a while, but they did it. And I have my example completely done so I can show you how it came out. Here is the paper for the benefits of GM foods which are 10 of them in total here, and the problems with GM foods, also 10 in total. Students will use this assignment to then help them figure out their claim for the argumentative essay and the supporting evidence that will support that claim, whether they feel that GM foods are beneficial or not. So after they completed those assignments, we switched and then I had my block one, my homeroom this afternoon, Wednesday, and they were working pretty much the whole entire time, except for the last hour or so, they were working on catching up on those assignments. So I gave them 30 minutes. Actually, we worked on it more than that, but I spent time passing out the papers. Once I passed out all the papers for the students that needed to finish work, which was pretty much almost all of them, I then put a timer on for 30 minutes. They worked on that. I collected the papers. I told them if they had anything they hadn't finished, they could take it home and turn it in tomorrow for a grade. And then we read our paired selection for unit three, week five, which is a pick of the patch. This is the paired passage for the pick of the patch. And this is our paired selection, as you can see, is different from a new kind of corn. This was a new kind of corn. Again, it's a time for kids article, but is an argumentative text that is structured with compare and contrast. 
So we have the benefits and the problems. So this one is different. They were able to identify the text structure as sequence, chronological order sequence, and we went ahead and read the procedures of creating a giant pumpkin. And then we went ahead and compared it to the anchor text, how both texts were similar and different. The students will take their assessment tomorrow on the computer as soon as they come in. And to finish off the day, I went ahead and gave them a writing sheet of paper so that they can start working on the introduction for the GM Foods argumentative essay. I did reuse an old document and I forgot to change informative to argumentative, but the prompt is correct. And I was modeling this paragraph for the students. It is not the best paragraph. I do have to revise it, but I am also working on creating some other sample introductions so that students can work on their introduction as well as then continue to their body paragraph one for the, re the first reason why they have that claim and then their body paragraph two and then of course their conclusion. Their lasting impression is a little something that makes the reader think, feel, or smile. It's usually the last sentence of the conclusion paragraph, but all of these reminders are on the margin of the page so that they remember what they need to include to make sure that they have all the parts that they need to have for their essay. So that's all I have for today. Wednesday, I've been having a headache all day long. I think it's about time that I stop letting it linger and just take my migraine medication. And I'm very exhausted. So I'm gonna go home and tomorrow is another day. Hello everyone, welcome to the end of the day Thursday. Uh, I stayed here later than I should have. It's already 7.30, so I need to get going. I had enough grades, but I wanted to add a few more grades, including the assessments that the students took today for reading. So I updated my grade book and tomorrow's a teacher planning day. So I finished with my students this morning. I started with my block one, even though it's a Thursday and immediately they started working on their reading test, which took the entire two and a half hours. And those students that finished were working on their iReady minutes and typing.com for typing practice, etc. Then I had my block one this afternoon and they also took their assessment. Before that, I went ahead and together we read A New Kind of Corn and the parrot selection, The Pick of the Patch, which I did with my block one yesterday. Then they took the scaffolded assessment on their own without any support from me. <laughs> and I graded all of those papers today. And after music, they were finishing up some Imagine Learning Minutes, I Ready Minutes, and some of them owed me some work for their one word activity. So I just finished upgrading the grades in the grade book for those activities that they needed to finish. And then we ended the day with recess and they're not coming back until next week, Monday, since tomorrow is a teacher planning day and then it's the weekend. So I'm not gonna close out the vlog yet. I'm gonna take you through my planning day tomorrow. So let me gather my things and I will see you in a few short seconds. Good morning, everyone. We are now on Friday, January 19th, 2024. And it is a teacher planning day, like I mentioned yesterday. I just got to school, got to my classroom, stopped by Starbucks this morning to get myself a matcha latte and a egg white spinach feta wrap for breakfast. So here's my matcha latte. It is a grande, but I asked for a venti cup because I asked for the vanilla cold foam. And I got my spinach wrap in here. And I also got my co-teacher a drink. She likes the caramel macchiato. So I'm gonna get settled, eat my breakfast, and get my things sorted for today so I have an idea exactly what I wanna focus on today's planning day. So let's see how much we can accomplish and I'll let you know and take you through it. Hello everyone, a little bit of an update. So I spent most of the beginning of my morning just checking student work and grading some other papers that the students were working on this past week and I triple checked, double checked, quadruple checked, whatever checked my grades before the final upload that happened at 10 a.m. 
And then after that at 10 a.m., I had a Zoom meeting with one of the representatives from our district's Department of Advanced Academics. They are asking me to revise one of the novel studies that I have written for the district a couple years ago. Since we have new standards that the state has adopted, we want to revamp these novel studies to make them align to the new standards and update the activities and make some other revisions. And I have a week to do it, so I'm going to just do one at a time. We're starting with one novel study. She's going to send me the list of four of the fourth grade novel studies uh, and then from there, I choose one that I want to work on this week, and I'll start working on it this weekend and hopefully be able to give it to them by Monday. And I have until next week, Thursday, to do it, but I want to get it done and have it to them and hand it to them. So that's what I just finished doing. Right now, I'm going to get ready to work on my lesson plans. So let me show you how I prepare for lesson planning. It all starts with my lesson template. I do have this template created on PowerPoint. I don't have it in my TPT store. I'm trying to find a way so that I can make it available in a way. I don't know, because all this needs to be edited and I just don't know. These are our state standards and these are our English language arts expectations. I put the date up here. So as you can see, I'm using the one not from this week, but from last week, because last week was a full five day school week. This week was only three days. And I, you know, change it up so that I block these two days and it looks like this. So instead of recreating the cells that I merged, I just use the previous week that has five weeks or five days, I'm sorry, already in the lesson plan. And all I do is I make sure I save a copy so this one will be for next week, which is week 21. And that will be the 22nd of January to the 26th. So I'm going to save it. So any changes I make, now it, it'll be for that. And I can change the date up here, 22nd to the 26th. And we're going to be working with Wonders Unit 4, weeks 1 and 2, which we start week 1 next week it'll be a two-week unit so now what i do is i will move these little check marks um to where the standards that we're focusing um will be we always uh, incorporate the yellow expectations and i also pretty much keep my materials the same except if i need to make changes and then i'll start going in here by changing the standards which i get also from over here and doing my objective for that day for that subject so i plan for language arts and reading and sometimes i separate my blocks because you know i have an advanced group and i have an ell group but like last week we were all doing pretty much the same thing it's just i modified it within the classes and i need to choose our new spelling words or vocabulary words and the homework assignment this is the legend for evaluation and the legend for ESOL strategies which go over here so these numbers will correlate to the numbers that are down here. So once I already have this ready to go and I need to start choosing my standards, then I start accessing my district uh, documents, which we access through Schoology. I just downloaded them. This is our pacing guide. And as you can see, this is for the two weeks and the passages that we'll be working with. Unit four, text set one, weeks one and two. This one, we're going back to a social studies text set last um, text set was very science heavy so this one is social studies heavy so it has all the comprehension vocabulary all you know all the big five for reading and whoop, i kind of went fast and it has the writing workshop we are using a 10-day framework which i do need to also have it um, downloaded um, since we are getting ready for the district writing test that's coming up in april so we're starting a new 10-day instructional day period for writing. So next week, Monday, I have to activate background knowledge, review the rubric for expository, go over the student-friendly checklist, review um, the prompt and set the purpose for reading. And lesson two, which will be Tuesday, we will read and analyze source one and two, et cetera. So I need to have this you know, visible and ready to go as I plan. So they also give us ideas on what to do for our small group differentiated instruction. So this is like our resource menu. And they show us how to focus the teacher-led center. 
These are some of the activities that students can do based on the learning acceleration options and what we're focusing on in reading. So this is for below proficiency, this is for at or near proficiency, and this is for on and above. And that is our pacing guide. And then they give us a PDF copy of our wonders unit. So we have access to the whole entire thing, which I love because I can plan it from my iPad. This is our weekly planner for that. These are our activity cards that we can use in centers or small groups, etc. So these are all the things that we'll be focusing on for this particular unit. And this is what students can use for small groups. This is their goals for this unit. And this is the writing unit, but we're not using this particular writing unit per se. Some of the mini lessons we can do, but we're actually using a modified unit. We're gonna be working on, um, these are additional student desired outcomes that the district makes sure that we are working with with our students so they can dig deeper with the standards. And this is the technology that's available for writing. So we have access to Microsoft Word, Class Notebook, or our Performance Matters, which starting this new grading period, which starts next week, Monday, we're gonna be having the students type on Performance Matters their essay so they can get used to that actual you know, environment that they're gonna be taking the real state writing test in April. And this is the calendar that shows us. So this is fourth grade, this is fifth grade. So they're starting with invasive species. So that's something I have to assign to the students and performance matters. And this is the prompt we'll be working on starting next week. It's an expository prompt where students need to explain how invasive species are causing problems and they will be able to read these sources. Source one is from pet to threat. Source two is sick pets, sick people. Source three is alien invasion. And I have done these before with my students. So I'll be able to grab some of the planning, not the planning, some of the examples that I have created um, as we go over that. And I also, when I'm planning, I look at the assessment that students will take at the end of the two weeks. So I do uh, you know, plan with a backwards mentality. So um, this is the first text set is the bet for flag. So we're again, social studies heavy and they're gonna have some questions. So I wanna look at the type of questions. So this vocabulary and it's a part A and a part B. This is a table match. They're looking at the effects. So we're looking at cause and effect as our text structure. We're looking at vocabulary. And again, we're looking at headings. So that's part of our text features. We're looking again, text structure. And then our paired text is saving water. So this is a little bit uh, connected to, or very connected to the paired text that we'll be reading in the unit itself. So again, vocabulary, vocabulary. So I'm gonna be looking at these questions, how they're asked, the type of skills the students need so that as I'm planning, I incorporate uh, some of those skills within. So as you can see, source two is very vocabulary heavy, but source one has vocabulary plus text structure, cause and effect, and the text features of headings. So that helps me as I get ready for planning. And these are the standards right there. So we're looking at Latin roots and headings and text structure. Oh, and homophones and homographs as well. That's what the source apparent selection was. I also looked at the scaffolded assessment. This is the one that my ESO level students or my ELL learners take on their own. So they have a lot of scaffolds. They only do the first text and they answer the questions for only that text. So that is what I kind of try to focus on and take a look at as I start planning. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know, start with the first page of the pacing guide and connect it to my actual lesson plans. And the other thing that I also downloaded was the PowerPoints that they give us for the ESOL students, which I also use with my advanced students because they do have different resources and videos that are very good for background knowledge and to help them understand. So we're looking at the essential question, why do we need government? So again, very social studies heavy. So this is the PowerPoint. And as you can see, it has all those skills that were in the pacing guide, but scaffolded for ESOL or ELL learners. So they include this whole entire PowerPoint. I pick and choose which sections I wanna use with my students, obviously. And a lot of them have links that go to different activities and videos that I can incorporate into my instruction. So they have this one, which is for reading. I'm just gonna zoom through it. 
There's grammar, there's fluency, and they include expository writing along with some examples and reminders, cause and effect. And I'm glad they're doing invasive species because it goes hand in hand with the text structure that we are currently focusing on in reading. So that's very connected. Students are gonna be able to see in their reading that they're looking at causes and effects, and they're also going to see in their writing how that connects. The bilingual department also provides a writing PowerPoint that we can use for this particular unit. So here's a video on expository writing, and they go into the similar pages that you saw in the reading, but it's just separate. So if we wanna just use this separately, they can. And if you notice, they include the sources and annotations of the sources. So this is source one, and then a little graphic organizer so students can organize their ideas, source two, graphic organizer, et cetera. So um, yeah, all these resources are available to us. So I'm just gonna be working on plugging all that information in so I can plan for my five day school week for next week. The time right now is 11 a.m. So I'm going to work on this and I'm going to let you know how it turns out at the end. As I'm planning, I also may come up with ideas on activities that I wanna do with the students. So I'll stop, you know, pause my planning and I create the activity really quickly and print it so I know to make copies of it for the following week. So let me go ahead and plan and I'll show you the results when I'm done. Just finished planning. It is now 1235, so it took me an hour and a half to plan. And I'll show you, I mean, the time lapse, you kind of saw me zooming and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm gonna now show you my final lesson plans and some of the activities that I put together for next week. So here are my lesson plans for Wonders Unit 4. We're working with structure, specifically cause and effect. We're going to be paraphrasing and summarizing, comparing reading, because we're going to be comparing shared read to anchor text, etc. We're working with academic vocabulary, morphology with Latin roots and context and connotations or context clues, all of the ELL expectations, same supplies, materials, etc. And these are my lessons. I'm pretty much going to do similar things with each of my blocks, but obviously I'm going to be modifying the activities and we're working with an expository essay on invasive species. These are our vocabulary words for next week, and this is the homework assignment. They're gonna work on the passage Get Involved, which I have it differentiated for ELL and my advanced group, a graphic organizer and cause and effect, and practicing those Latin roots. So to get us started, I created this introduction sheet. Both classes are going to use it, obviously with my ELL students. I'll give them some sentence starters, but they're gonna reflect on each part of the introduction on Monday for the unit, the opener video, the study blast sync, and the listening comprehension, which is speaking out against child labor. So they'll reflect on that. When we read our shared read on Tuesday, they're gonna be working on completing this reciprocal teaching organizer, where they're going to put their background knowledge and everything they know about government, they're going to predict, they're going to clarify these three words, visualize, answer the question, and summarize the passage. I also have this different reading response than the one in their reading writing companion, which is part of our student desired outcomes. So of course, as we are studying the cause and effect text structure they're going to answer it and i included some sentence uh starters to get them started the expository essay i'm not sure if i'm going to use the sheet or if i'm going to have them write it in their notebooks but that's the prompt we're writing about invasive species and how they're causing problems so again the introduction body paragraph one body paragraph two and the conclusion this is the reading passage that they'll be reading for homework get involved this is the ELL passage, so you can see compared to the advanced passage, so this is the advanced passage and the reading comprehension questions that they'll answer, 
And then, of course, they'll have their graphic organizer and cause and effect and their practice on Latin roots. And then I went ahead and I printed out their sources like this. Maybe I'll have them keep it in their notebooks. So this is an easy way for me to print it off. They're not double sided so they can add it to their notebooks and they'll have all the sources available to them in their notebooks so they can refer back to them along with the writing prompt. And I need them to start getting used to using the planning sheet that the state will provide when they actually take their test. Now, this is the only thing that they'll have to write on when they take their test on April. Everything else they'll just type on the computer. And I worked on recreating that expository, well, it said informational or informative, their expository planning sheet. This is what I'm gonna use for my ELL group. They'll start with their introduction slash topic sentence, source one and source two details, and state their conclusion, which is restating the central idea. So those are all the resources that I created for next week's lesson plans. And now I can put my lesson plans right here so that they are ready to go for next week. So all in all, that is the bulk of planning for next week. I literally have maybe 45 minutes to work on literacy night. So I want to at least choose a passage that I want to use for literacy night and then start to come up and brainstorm some activities for the escape room that I'm going to do. So let me work on that now and see what we end up coming up with. I don't think I'm going to be able to declutter today, but such is life <laughs> apparently right now in live presently just did the preliminary brainstorming for the escape room for the literacy night next week wednesday i'm going to continue working on it over the weekend along with updating the novel study for the advanced academics department but i did choose my passage and some of the ideas for what activities i want to do so this is the passage that i went ahead and selected this is a resource that I bought from uh, Jennifer Jones, Jen Jones from Hello Literacy on TPT. And she has these short informational articles that have different text structures. So I have volume one and volume two. Last year, I actually used volume two when I did the last year's Literacy Night Escape Room using this article on Sea Glass. This year, I am going to choose the one I just showed you, which is this one on video games and it goes over cause and effect so i thought that would be a really engaging article for the students and their parents to read what i did is on my ipad i started taking notes the passage the text structure i want to have three lock activities i say locks because they're going to be inside envelopes so i'm going to do a cause and effect sort I chose 10 different vocabulary. So what I did is I also have the passage here on my iPad. So all the ones that are circled are vocabulary words that I chose. The green are the benefit of video games and the red are the problems with video games, which I think is great because we just recently went over that kind of argumentative text style last week. So I went ahead and, you know, made this list. And with the this or that, they read the passage, answer some comprehension questions, and then whatever the answer is, we'll use it for a code to unlock the last lock. Obviously, I have to do a little bit more brainstorming. So the way that I just create my escape rooms is I choose the passage, and this is for reading, but if it's for math, it'll be whatever skill or concept we're learning. So I choose the passage, I look at the skills, look at the standards that we're currently working on, and then start to develop a list of activities involving those standards and skills that I want the students to practice. So that is what I'm starting to think of. I also have my document that I created for last year's escape room, which I'm going to tweak and change the activities, but at least I have almost like a template that I can use to go ahead and plan those escape room activities. So these are the skills that I went over last year. So they had a vocabulary one, where they matched the definition with the word. And once they did that, it revealed the code.
They also had one, this is the one where they put their cause and effect. These were cut out and the causes will go on the sides that had the numbers and they will have to figure out what effect went with that cause. And then they did this one, which was kind of like a maze. And as they were answering the questions, it'll give them directions on how to move about the maze and circle the letter that they landed and that gave them a code. And I just created these little things to be like the titles for each envelope. So at least I have that to get me going and get me started. And yeah, that's basically where I'm gonna leave you because it's already gonna be 1.30 and my appointment is in an hour. So I'm gonna get my things and head out. Uh, before I head out, I'm gonna straighten out the desk a little bit so that they're ready for Monday. But that's it for this week, week 19 or yeah, I think it's week 19 or 20. I can't remember probably week 19 so i hope you enjoyed coming along with me if you did don't forget to hit the like button leave a comment down below let me know what you thought or any questions you may have also if you have some escape room activities that you like to do in paper because my locks are in envelopes and inside the envelopes are the activity that they have to complete to move on to the next envelope leave your ideas down below so that we can share it with each other and i'll probably make a separate video just about escape rooms because i am planning to on doing a pd for my district pretty soon on escape rooms so we'll see how that goes and um yeah also leave an emoji what emoji should we leave let's leave um a magnifying glass because escape room right we're looking for clues since that's the last thing i'm leaving you with and yeah i hope you enjoy coming along with me and um if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos i hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile hello dreamers wishers and magical thinkers thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support if you'd like to subscribe you can do so by clicking on my picture down here you can also check out my latest videos here and here don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.